The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, Democratic controversy. Did Democrats avoid condemning one of their own members over charges of anti-Semitic remarks? And the latest in high technology, a look at the extraordinary inventions from Israel. Then, a missionary doctor. If you put your finger right here. Becomes the patient himself. An American doctor who became infected with the Ebola virus in West Africa is in stable condition tonight at a Nebraska hospital. He returns to the field. As I always joked with people, hey, I'm immune. I'm immune now. I might as well go and help. And takes our cameras along for the ride. Well, I think it's the, the calling and conviction of the Lord in my life. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Condemning anti-Semitism, well, it should be easy, but that's not the case for Democrats in the House of Representatives. It took them a week to respond to controversial comments made by one of their newest members. They finally agreed on a resolution that does condemn anti-Semitism, but not before expanding it to include other groups. Jennifer Wishon joins us from Washington to explain. What began as a House resolution condemning anti-Semitism morphed into a seven-page document condemning anti-Muslim bigotry, along with a whole host of other bad behaviors. It all started when freshman Congresswoman Elon Omar, one of two Muslim members of the House, suggested lawmakers who support Israel are pledging allegiance to a foreign country, something many lawmakers found deeply offensive. We are having this debate because of the language of one of our colleagues. Language that suggests that Jews like me, who serve in the United States in Congress, and whose father earned a Purple Heart fighting the Nazis in the Battle of the Bulge, that we are not loyal Americans? Why are we unable to singularly condemn anti-Semitism? A question asked passionately by members on both sides of the aisle. We came here because of an anti-Semitic remark. And we came here to condemn anti-Semitism. But this resolution, as changed up over the last hour, now condemns just about everything. Along with anti-Muslim rhetoric, the resolution condemns past white extremist attacks on African Americans, bigotry against Latinos, Latinos, Native Americans, Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, other people of color, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, the LGBTQ community, and immigrants. We left out the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We left out Wiccans. We left out Jehovah's Witnesses. We left out disabled people who are often discriminated and had hateful things about. And some members were outraged. Congresswoman Omar wasn't called out in the resolution. Speaker Pelosi pushed to keep her out of it. It is one resolution addressing these, these forms of hatred, not mentioning her name, because it's not about her. It's about uh, the, these forms of hatred. The debate comes as American support for Israel is falling. When asked about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, a new Gallup poll finds 59% of Americans say they're more sympathetic towards Israel. That's down from 64% just last year. The divide among Democrats over support for Israel may have political implications heading into 2020 as the party works to win back more moderate Democrats. President Trump won in 2016. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Well, here's the amazing thing about this story. Since the end of World War I, it's been America's foreign policy to recognize the right of self-determination for the Jewish people. And they supported, uh, this goes all the way back to the council at San, San Remo in 1920. They supported forming an independent state, an independent Jewish state in Palestine, in what used to be part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so the Ottomans ruled it. They lost World War I. And at, from that point forward, the, the British mandate was established. And that mandate was to create a Jewish state. Uh, so it's been part of our foreign policy uh, for almost 100 years. So you look at this, and now you have a new, newly elected member of commerce saying it's unpatriotic, that somehow or other you're pledging allegiance to a foreign power if you support Israel. Uh, and and they, the House of Representatives 
can't come to their senses and say, we need to condemn this. Uh, and this is anti-Semitism. What this resolution does, it doesn't do anything other than support the remarks. When you say uh, we, we, we're not going to call out Congresswoman Omar, we're not going to name her specifically, we're not going to distance ourselves from her remarks, and then you add into it, uh, you can't have anti-Muslim hate speech. Well, this resolution actually supports her. It doesn't condemn her at all. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand what just got passed, but it just it, it doesn't cut it. And in our foreign policy, we have recognized Israel. We have recognized Israel's right to exist. Uh, and anything that opposes that has, has not been in any part of the American conversation for 100 years. Well, in other news, Senate leader Mitch McConnell is ready to go nuclear to speed up confirmation of judicial nominees. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. Right now, more than 130 federal court seats are vacant. Republicans say Democrats are obstructing the process, delaying President Trump's nominees. For example, Naomi Rao, who's on track to fill a key appeals court seat formerly held by Brett Kavanaugh. She's facing opposition over past writings about date rape and her views on abortion. Leader McConnell is considering a rule change that would speed up the process and fill the lower court spots before the end of President Trump's first term. Well, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort will serve close to four years in prison for ta tax and bank fraud. That's far below the 20-year term sentencing guidelines recommend and prosecutors wanted. Still, it's the longest sentence for defendant in cases stemming from Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. It's important to note Manafort was not charged with colluding with the Russians in the 2016 election. The special prosecutor is expected to submit his final report soon. Manafort will also be sentenced next week on additional charges that he served as an unregistered foreign agent for Ukraine, laundered money, and tampered with a witness. Well, hundreds of ISIS fighters are giving up the fight in Syria, and they're fleeing to the embattled village of Bahuz, the final holdout. Meanwhile, families are taking refuge in makeshift camps. Some civilians are arriving at an open-air medical center in the Syrian desert. There to meet them are volunteers from the Free Burma Rangers, a Christian medical aid group. They've been providing care to the injured and sick. The ministry's Dave Eubanks spoke by phone on CBN's World Beat program about sharing the love of Christ in the war zone. We try to give our food and blankets and medical care with love and with prayer. And most of the time we can pray with them. Very few refuse that. When we begin to talk about Jesus, many say they don't want to hear it, but some do. And so we had a chance to give some Bibles to a very few that wanted them, to pray with many, especially the wounded, and they always want prayer. And we have a chance to say, Call on Jesus' name. This is a new start. Call on his name and see what he does for you. We're not trying to convert you. You just ask him to help you and see what happens. Eubanks and his own team have risked their lives to help rescue civilians caught in the middle of the fighting. Well, because of its groundbreaking technology and competitive business atmosphere, Israel has been called the startup nation. This week, Israeli companies showcase that te technology. CBN's Chris Mitchell shows us how it's changing the world. Nearly 20,000 innovators and investors from almost every country came to see or signed up online for the largest tech meeting in the history of Israel, the Our Crowd Global Investor Summit. The summit brings together extraordinary technologies like Beyond Meat that develop a plant-based meat substitute and many more. Very good. They make water out of air. We think that we found the solution for the entire world, for the new source of drinking water. They plan to connect the world through microsatellites. There are four billion people in the world that are not connected. They need to be able to choose whether to connect, to be connected. And they help the paralyzed get on their feet. It's very innovative. It's perfect. It's so stable. And when I walked down the aisle with it, it was a dream come true. Our crowd showcased all these technologies. John Medved is the CEO and founder. Our crowd is the world's largest investment platform for investors to invest in startups online and in person at events like this Our Crowd Summit. At the summit, investors meet innovators. Our crowd democratizes capital by giving smaller investors an opportunity to invest in cutting edge innovations, just like the large venture capitalists. 
After six years, our crowd is celebrating $1 billion raised for 170 companies. But the bottom line is changing the world. They call it the double bottom line, making money and doing good. What's most exciting about today's event is that we're focused on impact, on how startups can tackle global challenges and how can startups really bring to humanity um, a, a huge impact for the better. Medved explains it as an expression of tikkun olam, the Jewish concept of healing the world. Betty Wu Adams believes Christians can play a role. God is our first entrepreneur. He created this world out of nothing for the first six days. I believe there's a calling for us as Christians to partner with our crowd as we invest in companies that's going to transform and change the world. Medved sees the summit through the lens of the Bible. It's a little bit biblical today because the nations are flocking to Israel to see what we can do to help tackle global challenges and how they can bring back those lessons to their own countries. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Our Crowd Global Summit, Jerusalem. Some exciting new inventions. Thank you, Chris. Well, President Trump visits Alabama today after last week's deadly tornado. The president will see the region where the powerful storm tore through the rural countryside, leaving 23 people dead. Now many of the survivors are digging through what's left of their homes and belongings. Operation Blessing is on the ground helping residents like Barbara Rowan. She wasn't home when the storm hit and believes her life was spared. Operation Blessing prayed with her and helped her sort through and clean up the debris. Uh, Gordon, some important and heartening work there. Yeah, we just landed uh, on, just moved in to help those people. If you want to be a part of it, all you have to do is give to Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. You can call us 1-800-700-7000. You can also write us at CBN Center. Virginia Beach, Virginia 23463. Just put in the memo line of the check. Uh, the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. We also have a place on CBN.com where you can designate your gift. If you want to help people, do it right now. Call us now, 1 800 700 7000. Terry? Well, coming up, the American doctor who nearly died five years ago from the Ebola virus. I always joked with people, hey, I'm immune. I'm immune now. I can't get Ebola again, so I might as well go and help. We'll ride alongside Dr. Rick Sakra as he continues his medical missions of mercy in Liberia after this. Keep up with what's happening in today's world from a Christian perspective, no matter where you are. Download the CBN News app, available at CBNNews.com. Well, five years ago, Rick Sacra made a headlines after contracting the deadly Ebola virus while serving in Liberia. Well, today, this missionary doctor continues to serve in the West African nation, showing compassionate care and love in the name of Christ. George Thomas has a look at his heroic work. Rick Sacra loves this country so much that he speaks English with a Liberian accent. It's not always easy to understand him, even for this reporter who grew up in Africa. Uh, do me a favor, if you cannot speak in Liberian English. <laughs> okay, so if you can talk in just regular English uh, that you learned in, uh, in high school, that would be My great. man, I finished forgetting our... <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Sikra and his wife, Debbie, first traveled to the West African nation some 30 years ago. What drew the couple here from Massachusetts? Well, I think it's the, the calling and conviction of the Lord in my life. Uh, he just has put a love for Liberia in my heart. And thankfully, he's given that same love and commitment to my wife. Sacra is a missionary doctor at ELWA Hospital outside Liberia's capital, Monrovia. ELWA stands for Eternal Love Winning Africa. Founded by American missionaries in 1965. If you put your finger right here. The hospital's mission is sharing the love of Jesus by caring for the sick. He's fooling me a little bit. ELWA is all about providing care, compassionate care in the name of Christ. 
EOWA has been the Sacre's home away from home now for 24 years. In Corinthians it says, Christ's love compels us. And I think that that just characterizes the way that we um, feel, that Christ's love compels us to go where we're needed. Since arriving here on the shores of Liberia back in 1995, Dr. Sacra has had one driving passion, and that is to train the next generation of Liberian doctors. His dream came true, by the way, about a year and a half ago, when he launched the first family medicine program. So what about abscess? It's the only one of its kind here, and gives the 56-year-old doctor an opportunity to put his training to use as a family physician. It's been my desire for many years to be able to pour my life and my skills and my experiences into local doctors who'll be able to pick up where, I've, where I'm gonna leave off. All right, this is the man on the motorcycle is okay. Jeremiah Colley, okay. and he's leading us. We are gonna follow him. We are going to his home. Paya Kweli is where he came from. For Sequa, it's also about using medicine for ministry. Oh yeah. Come on, big daddy. You can do it. CBN News joined a team from the hospital on a medical outreach to the Liberian forest. Getting to take you on this medical outreach trip into a rural area and, and see, you know, bring a pastor with us who can share Christ in the vernacular along in concert with what we're doing medically, it's just exciting. Our two-hour journey through the bush brought us to this remote village. This was not here the last time I was here. After a time of worship, prayer and a short sermon by the village pastor, Sacra and team spend the next nine hours tending to more than 300 villagers. Folks here um, don't have access to medical facilities. Um, they have to walk several hours to get to a medical center. Jarto Holdero and her baby had to walk three hours to today's outreach. She, like so many that CBN News spoke with, was grateful for the team's visit. I'm so thankful to God that I could come to have my daughter seen by the doctors. It was a difficult journey, but worth it. Probably in that operating room. The Sacres also pay a price. They have lived through two civil wars, and the 2014 deadly Ebola outbreak in West Africa almost cost Rick his life. He got infected with the virus while caring for a pregnant woman at ELWA hospital and had to be airlifted from Liberia to a treatment center in Omaha. An American doctor who became infected with the Ebola virus in West Africa is in stable condition tonight at a Nebraska hospital. Thankfully, he survived and returned to Liberia several months later to continue his calling of loving the stranger. And as I always joked with people, hey, I'm immune, I'm immune now. I can't get Ebola again, so I might as well go and help. In late January, Dr. Sacra received the prestigious $500,000 Laheim Prize for his work in Liberia. His hospital is also one of the recipients of a $2 million matching grant given by African Mission Healthcare and CBN that will help improve ELWA's infrastructure, train additional medical experts, and expand compassionate care to the Liberian people. Resources that Sacra says will go a long way to saving lives, both physically and spiritually. Reporting from ELWA Hospital off the coast of West Africa, I'm George Thomas, CBN News. Now, Rick is what an, what an amazing Christian. And, and the quote, compelled by love. And we, we, we all need this. We all need to be compelled by Christ's love to go out and reach the least of these. Rick likes to tell us that, you know, he's, he's the one guy who says when there's a fire, well, how do I run to it? Uh, and that's exactly what he did when he decided I'm going to care for Ebola patients. He's a doctor. He knew the risk. He contracted the disease, but God delivered him from that. And now he's back hard at work. And it's a great pl pr pleasure. It's a great honor to be a support of what he's doing. So if you're a member of the 700 Club, that's you at work. You were part of that million dollar grant that CBN made to make hospitals, missions hospitals in Africa work and do even more to help people in, in need. So congratulate yourself and thank you for what you are doing. Terry? 
Well, up next, a nurse injures herself trying to stay in shape. See how this military mother of five gets back on track. Plus, we're going to be praying for you and your needs right after this. Lorna Hester is a military wife and the mother of five. Her job as a home health nurse is vital to helping the family make ends meet. So when she injured her arm, she needed speedy relief. Lorna Hester is one busy lady, a Navy wife and mother of five. She's holding down the fort while her husband is stationed overseas. I tried to just keep going because I knew I had to keep strong while my husband was gone. She's also a home health nurse to a three-year-old special needs child. When she took the job in 2018, she knew it would take lots of energy and trips to the gym. I needed to stay fit because I knew I would have to pick him up. He has equipment that we have to carry with him to his school. Lorna was using the elliptical machine one evening and pushed a little too hard. I really have to do well on this job and I need to increase my speed but I was using my arms instead of my legs to keep up quickly. And then I hurt my arm by pulling too hard, too tightly. The elbow started to get tight and I couldn't open my arm. So I started to pray about it and asking the Lord for healing. The pain and tightness continued for weeks, making it tough to do her job or care for her own family. We're a military family and I needed to be able to work to help make ends meet while he was gone. I was having trouble lifting my bag to get in the car and folding the clothes. I just have to let it rest because I couldn't straighten my arm and lifting something up. I had to ask my sons to please carry these things for me. Just starting a new job, Lorna didn't want to take time off to see a doctor, so she tried ibuprofen and muscle creams. But it didn't really stop that pain and it couldn't straighten my arm. Lorna had worked through the pain for nearly two months. Then one morning, she was watching the 700 Club. Oh, I love 700 Club every day. I, I love to stay encouraged. I was doing dishes and I wanted to have relief from this pain. So I was asking God for help. I just heard a word of knowledge from Terry. There's something else you have clicking in your right elbow. It is painful and so annoying. God's healing that for you. That whole joint is just being completely reconfigured. I said, Lord, that is for me. I'm receiving that. I felt my arm just release and it straightened and I could open my arm. And I said, Lord, thank you. <laughs> I was able to pick up my bag, able to put it in my car, and then able to do the things that I do every day. So <laughs> no pain, there was no pain. And it's been that way ever since. Lorna is grateful for her family, her work, and God's mercy. When we cry out to the Lord in our trouble, He saves us out of our distress. That is part of your inheritance as a child of God. And we want you to know that today God knows your name, He knows your need, and His ear is bent toward you and toward me. And He says when we pray together that powerful things happen in the heavens. So that's what we want to do right now is pray together for whatever your needs might be. But first, we want to encourage you with some reports of others who have been touched by the Lord. Gordon, this is Frank. He lives in Clearwater, Florida. He was driving his tractor one day and took a serious fall. From that point, he couldn't walk on his own. One day he was watching this program and he heard you pray for the person who fell and was unable to walk. Frank followed your instruction to put his hand on the place he was hurt. He also placed one hand on the TV, TV, touching and agreeing with you, Gordon, by faith. After the prayer, he got up and started walking. He woke his wife up and oh, showed her the miracle. Together, they <laughs> rejoiced, cried, and gave God all the glory. I mean, that's yeah. got to be a pretty amazing experience. God still gets people up out of yeah. beds, and yep. I love it. Here's Vonda. She had a growth behind her earlobe and been there for five years, watching the 700 Club Terry said something. 
There's someone. You have some kind of growth behind your ear. Very concerning. It's close to your skull, also impacting your hearing. God is just going to cause that to slowly go down and be gone. You won't have to worry about it anymore. Well, Vonda claimed her healing. She doesn't have a growth anymore. And God gets all the glory. We don't know Vonda. We don't know the, the people that we're praying for. God just speaks to us, gives us what, what the Bible calls a word of knowledge. And that sparks off faith. And God always responds to faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Now, here's a word for you. It comes from Psalm 103. He forgives all your iniquities and he heals all your diseases. Now, some of us say, well, that's all going to happen in heaven because there's nobody sick in heaven. Well, I've got some good news for you. Jesus told us to pray this. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're supposed to fix things down here. We're supposed to pray down heaven so that these problems don't exist anymore. Keep in mind, Jesus died so that you could be free, free of sin, free of disease. He died to fulfill Psalm 103. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. What part of all don't you understand? It's all, and it's you. So let's agree, standing on these wonderful verses, let's get encouraged and realize the eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro over the whole earth to show himself strong. For who? For you. Because your heart is loyal to him. You're looking to the promise. You're looking to Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith. Let's pray. Lord, we just lift the needs of the audience to you right now. And as people are, are looking to you, we just ask right now that you would encourage their faith, that you would give them the faith. Faith comes by hearing speak to your people, Lord God. Heal, encourage, deliver, forgive. Set them free from all guilt and shame. Let them know that they're justified in your sight, that your blood has cleansed them from all unrighteousness. You have set them free from the law of sin and death, and they don't have to be bound by anything anymore. They can walk free of any disease, any infirmity. In Jesus' name, we say over these bodies now, be healed and be set free from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be restored, have new energy, have new vitality, new circulation, proper heartbeat. In Jesus' name, let everything be normal now. Terry, God spoke to you. Yeah, someone, you have... Um a problem with your eyes. It's, it's not one thing. It's recurring issues with your eyes, infections, and um, you've had things underneath your eyelids, but commonly you get styes in your eye that really are unsightly, but become infected and impact your sight. God's healing that whole condition for you. No more problems in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone you've been diagnosed with a mass in your lung, and it's just turned your whole world upside down. And, and God is speaking directly to you right now. That mass is going away. Yeah. You don't have to worry anymore. Go back and get retested and just give all the glory to God. He's heard your prayer. He's answered it today mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Someone else, you saw that story of the, the woman with the elbow. And, you know, you're just saying, uh, you know, I need mine healed. Well, today's your day. You have broken something in your elbow. You had a fall. It's being completely healed today. No more clicking, no more pain, no more stiffness in that elbow. Just straighten it out and bend it like you couldn't do it before. You'll find God's healed it. Uh, there's someone you got extreme pain in your left knee. Your whole knee has been wrenched. Um, and it, you're you got swelling and, and just a tremendous pain. God is healing that. He's able to restore ligament. He's able to restore cartilage. He's able to heal completely in Jesus' name. Be restored. Now, what you couldn't do before, do it now. If you couldn't put weight on that leg, put weight on it now, giving glory to God for what he has already done for you. you. He's already healed you. He's already set you free from all that pain now. Be healed mm -hmm. 
in Jesus' name. And someone else, you have digestion problems. You've had them since you were a child and you just feel like you almost can't be healed just because you've had the condition so long. Today's your day. Jesus is healing you completely. Just lift up your hands and receive it and eat what you will. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the wonder of who you are, yes. for you are wonderful. We just receive all that you have for us. We appropriate it all by faith and we bless your holy name for what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have been healed, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. And if you need prayer, we believe in prevailing prayer. It's the prayer that gets an answer. So call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's our honor, our privilege to pray for you. So call us now, 1-800-700-7000. Sure. Well, coming up later, 15 years and 27 days. That's how long Winter and Jonathan Pitts were married. Today, Jonathan talks about his wife's sudden death and the legacy she left behind. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. India has seen a dramatic rise in Christian persecution. The newest figures from a human rights group show the cases of hate and violence against India's minority Christians jumped 57% in the first two months of this year. That's compared to 49% last year. According to the Evangelical Fellowship of India, 77 incidents were documented against Christians between January and February of 2019. That's in comparison to just 49 cases in 2018. Violent attacks against Christians have steadily increased since a radical Hindu party took control of India's government a few years ago. The Christian watchdog group Open Doors has ranked India as the 10th worst country in the world for Christian persecution. Well, Operation Blessing is providing clean water to families in Honduras, families like nine-year-old Sangis, who's continu who've continually suffered from waterborne illnesses. The water system near their village was contaminated with dirt, worms, leaves, and bacteria. Operation Blessings installed a state-of-the-art water project that delivers clean drinking water to taps located throughout the village. Now Sangi and other families can quench their thirst quickly and without fear. To learn more about Operation Blessing, visit its website at ob.org. Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Well, Al and Mary love spoiling their seven grandchildren. They enjoy having fun with them and teaching them about the Bible. And they do both at the same time through CBN's Superbook. Al and Mary Chick's seven grandchildren are the joy of their lives. Being Papa Al is a pretty cool thing because you get all the fun stuff of being a dad and none of the hassles. And as much as the couple enjoys treating the kids to fun and games, they're even more interested in laying a foundation of faith for them. One way they do that is through CBN's Superbook. It's teaching them the truth, teaching them the Bible, and um, giving them a direction. Make way, ladies! <laughs> the kids are very visual. They, they like cartoons and they like stories like that, so that's the way to reach them. And I just feel good about reaching them with a story content that's gonna give them you know, questions and knowledge about the Lord and because they don't always get that in their day-to-day -day lives. Now, their grands can't get enough of Superbook. What's going on? I always ask, can we watch Superbook? Because I, I love it. My favorite Superbook is Daniel and the Lion's Den. I like seeing Chris enjoy going into the Bible because I'm so excited to see them talk about Jesus. Al and Mary say their favorite part is seeing their grandchildren learn about Jesus. A good part of their spiritual upbringing and knowledge of the Lord and coming to the Lord has been through Superbook. When we take them to church, like on the way home, that we'll say, what did you learn in church today? Oh, we learned the same story that we, we saw in the Superbook. So there's that correlation in the, the memory that, that is being instilled in their little brains, which is very cool. As CBN partners, the couple knows their gifts are making this same opportunity available to children all over the world. 
One of the best things about Superbook is the money that we contribute toward that program is allowing other kids who don't have a Papa Al to be able to see all these great stories in whatever their native language is. And I think little kids deserve a chance to, for, a, for a decent you know, childhood. So anything we can do to, to help that, I really am all behind. As you can see, kids love Superbook, and we we love getting these Superbook episodes to the children of the world. We're now over 40 different languages. There's a broadcast map where you can see all the different places around the world where Superbook is being broadcast, distributed through the internet. Um, it's amazing how many children are watching these. Our surveys are showing 160 million viewers last year. Absolutely incredible how many how many children are, are watching and they love it. So if you want to be a part of it, join the Superbook Club. For a gift of $25 or more, we'll send you this wonderful new episode, Jesus in the Wilderness. And then we have a special Easter offer where you can have the Last Supper and He is Risen. All of that, these two wonderful uh, DVDs containing three episodes will be yours when you join the Superbook club. So call us 1-800-700-7000. And as an extra bonus for Superbook Club members, you get access to the first three seasons of Superbook. Uh, so we'll send you uh, uh, codes where you can watch all three seasons. That's 36 episodes. Uh, we've got Spanish translations, uh, all kinds of translations up on those apps. So you can watch it on any device, a tablet, smartphone, uh, desktop, it's all available for you when you're a Superbook Club member. So if you want to join, call us now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, up next, last July, Winter and Jonathan Pitts finished the manuscript for a book on marriage. Four hours later, Winter died in her husband's arms. Jonathan Pitts joins us when we come back. Winter Pitts was the niece of her, of Dr. Tony Evans and the mother of actress Elena Pitts and three other daughters. She was also the founder of a ministry called For Girls Like You, as well as a magazine by the same name, Busy Lady. Then last July, just after finishing a book on marriage with her husband, Winter suddenly died. We had a 15 year journey. And in those 15 years, we realized what it looked like to not be perfect, but to be really intentional about our marriage. Jonathan and Winter Pitts celebrated their 15-year anniversary in 2018. Less than a month later, Jonathan turned in the final manuscript for their latest book. Four hours later, Winter took her last breath in her husband's arms. Our marriage isn't lacking in significance. That has eternal significance that goes beyond our 15 years as well. In their book, Emptied, Jonathan shares their take on Happily Ever After and how their love story continues to help others, even in the face of loss and tragedy. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Jonathan Pitts. What a year yeah. you have had. I mean, the dream of the book that you'd worked on together finally being completed and published and I've written, I know what a burden that is to have that done, but within hours after completing that book, winter dies. First of all, let me ask, I mean, obviously this has been very tough for you. You have four daughters. How are you all doing? We're doing well. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that video, so I apologize, yeah, yeah. but uh, we're doing well. I mean, God's been um, everything that we've needed and everything I believed up until this point. God has been, so he's been faithful, and uh, he's been our joy and sorrow, and um, he's These been good. These are the tests, Jonathan. These are the tests. So this was just last July that you submitted the manuscript, and within hours, you're, you're holding your wife as she dies. What happened to Winter? Yeah, she, uh, she had a heart murmur, which I think it's like 10% of the population is heart murmur. So we hear that all the time. Yeah, it was just sudden, unexpected. Um, she was as healthy as we thought she could have been, her heart. And uh, so in a lot of ways, I just trust, you know, Winter was a very peaceful girl and lived life with uh, very kind of low anxiety. And she exited this world just as simply as she lived it. And so um, it was a little bit traumatic for us, uh, for my yeah. girls and I. But 
I just have this uh, vision in my head of just her gently just going into Jesus' arms. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm really grateful for that. So. But the, the trauma of it, you know, the, the loss is traumatic in itself, but the unexpectedness yeah. of it had to hit you and your daughter so terribly hard. You had just finished this book. I mean, in a, in a sense, you know, her legacy is surely you and her girls, but mm -hmm. also this message. Tell me about Emptied. Yeah, well, for me, one of the beautiful things about that book, it's honestly sacred to me in a sense, because turning it in about four hours before she died was this reminder to me that only God gets to decide when a book starts and when one ends. Yeah. And I think about our marriage and I think about it being like a really good book. And it had all the, you know, peaks and valleys and all the things that you'd expect in Very a good book. Honest. And it was a short one. I mean, 15 years, I would have hoped for 30 or 40 or 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. And, but the reality is any good book, um, when it ends, you don't want it to. Um, yeah. And so I'm just really glad that it was a good one. I'm grateful for what I had in winter. But the book emptied is from um, Philippians 2, verse 7, which says, although Jesus was equal with God, he didn't take that equality with God, something to be grasped, but took on the form of a servant, humbled himself, became obedient even to the point of death, death on a cross. And so uh, I had done a study with my staff um, on that scripture and was reminded, I used our marriage as an illustration. And really the book came out of me doing that study with my staff, using my marriage as an illustration, and then realizing, oh, what Jesus did for us is really what we're supposed to do um, in our marriages for each other. You know, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Um, you know, you and you had such a wonderful relationship with Winter. You share so candidly the struggles, the ups, the downs, the victories in your book, but you are both very different. How do, you write about this in the book, but talk about this a little bit. How do people who are so different blend and bend, if you will, yeah. in a marriage because it's it's the only way it's really successful. Yeah. Well, I think it starts with just emptying yourselves of all the things that you have in you that would keep you from blending. So for example, your sins, all the different sins that you bring into your marriage, your history. You know, Winter and I brought a lot of history that wasn't necessarily good or bad, but they were different. So we had to submit that. Um, in order to receive each other. Um, also expectations that you have of each other. There, you come into marriage with so many expectations of what you want your spouse to be. For me, I wanted her to be my mom. And for her, we jokingly, we talk about it in the book, she wanted me to be Richard Gere. <laughs> and I definitely wasn't Richard Gere from Hollywood. I don't think so. either of those are that unusual, Jonathan. <laughs> exactly. So it's emptying ourselves of those things so that we can be filled up with all God wants yeah. to fill us up with, which is the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, all those different things. So. But one of the things, in, in this is evident in the book. One of the things you're talking about is a lot of self-evaluation. It's like looking inside mm -hmm. honestly, with a really honest perspective. That's not always easy to do. You share a, a comment that you made when you were engaged <laughs> to Winter that really hurt her. You didn't intend for it to hurt her, yeah. but it caused you when you realized you had to self-examine yeah. in a way you might not have otherwise. Talk about that. I figured you'd bring this up, but uh, <laughs> I, I document it in the book, so it's, it's easy for people to see. But we were 21 years old. We were engaged to be married. And um, I basically, in an effort to just talk about the value that I carried with for fitness and just uh -huh. looking at all that, I said to her in a moment of idiocy, I said, uh, it's really going to be hard for me to love you if you ever become overweight or I might have seen said if you get fat. And yeah. in that moment, what happened was the trust that we had built was broken. Trust is something yeah. that's easy uh, to break that's really hard to build. Um, and also, I think like there was a seed kind of planted in my heart of um, almost like this, uh, like, what would you call it? Just this just some, a seed of uh, maybe a root of bitterness or something like that that would cause me to have to, I'd have to deal with that and wrestle with that. And then she'd have to deal with it and wrestle with it because I said it. Mm -hmm. And so it was like stamped into our marriage was this issue that we'd have to wrestle through. And thankfully we wrestled through it well. And God gave me um, just the insight to begin to submit that and empty myself of that so that God could fill my marriage with something so much better that, than what I thought my marriage should be in terms of what it could look like. So the book is written and here you are one of the authors and the other author not here. How do you expect God to continue? I'm not saying that he, I'm saying what is your expectation for God to continue using this journey that you and Winter went on together to share your life and your history? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like for me, it's one of the greatest, I think one of the greatest joys I'll ever have in life is that this book, um, first of all, that it was documented, that our marriage was documented, yes. 15 years, 27 days documented not perfect days, but intentional days. Um, so I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful that although our marriage, obviously, you know, till death do us part, it's now parted, but the reality is that I'll carry that with me forever. And just 
The fact that God gave me such a precious gift in her, and now I have four beautiful girls with her that are also gifts. So I just, you know, it's an honor to carry that, um, that ministry, the book, our story um, for the rest of my life and beyond my life. So, You know, marriage, I think, is up against so much today. Uh, Jonathan just uses a word that he uses throughout this book. He and Winter both did. Uh, the book is called Emptied. The word is intentional, and it's a word that needs to be a part of your marriage, whoever you are, if you want it to be successful. This book will help you get there. It's available wherever books are sold. Jonathan, thank you for being so honest, so vulnerable. It's a, a beautiful story, and uh, you you carry the legacy beautifully, as will your daughters. Oh, thank I you. Thank sure. you for having me. Mm -hmm. We also have a social interview with Jonathan on our Facebook page. If you'd like to watch that, just go to facebook.com slash 700 club. Well, when we come back, we're going to answer your email questions, so stay with us. We'll be back right after this. We want to answer some of the email questions that you all have sent in. Gordon, this first one is from Jackie, who says, Gordon, my son was a Christian. He rebelled and then he died. I live in torment every day wondering where he went. Will I make God angry if I ask him where my son went? It was so hard to watch my child walk away from the way that I raised him. Uh, Jackie, you're not going to make God ever angry at you. That's, that's not going to happen. You're one of the redeemed and he loves you infinitely. So don't ever worry, you're going to make him angry. That's not going to happen. I would encourage you, though, don't play God and don't assume that your son um, passed away apart from God. Here's some foundational scriptures, and I think this is, needs to be reminded to every Christian uh, just how wonderfully easy God has made it to be saved. Regardless of what we've done, regardless of what we knew, how much we walked away, here it is. It's from Joel chapter 2, two verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, two apostles repeated this. First one is the apostle Peter in Acts chapter 2. And he says, it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then Paul repeats it in Romans chapter 10, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So believe that your son could have called on the name of the Lord. So is he saved? The answer from scripture is yes. So be encouraged with that uh, and pray that. Uh, and see what answer you get from God. This is a viewer who says, how do I remove doubt from my heart? Well, that's a question for all Christians everywhere, and it's the fundamental behind the fight, the good fight of faith. And Jesus actually ran into this. So if Jesus is running into doubt and unbelief, uh, we can expect ourselves to run into doubt and unbelief. Here it is from Mark chapter 9. Jesus says to him, if you can believe... All things are possible to him who believes. Well, immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. For me, one of the things I've learned is that's a great prayer. And then the second part is instead of focusing on my doubt, let's start focusing on some great facts. And here's some great facts. Jesus came and he dwelt on the earth and he lived a sinless life. The promise of the Old Testament, the promise of a Messiah was fulfilled by him. He fulfilled every scripture there was to fulfill. He has done it all. He'll fulfill even more when he comes back again and ushers in the messianic age. What a wonderful thing. And he died on a cross and his blood was shed for me and he forgives me of all my sin. He sets me free from all of that. And he didn't stop there. He went on, was raised from the dead three days later. And now he is at the right hand of the Father. And what is he doing? He's praying for me. So you focus on all those facts and doubt and unbelief. Go away. Okay, this is Neil who says, my question is, what do you think of transcendental meditation? I understand it's a type of meditation used for relaxation and anxiety. I am a Christian. I need your advice. Uh, I would stay away from transcendental meditation. Any meditation that says, well, let's take all thought out of your mind. Yeah. Um, you need to have your mind filled with the Word of God. And here is the biblical meditation. 
You find it in Joshua chapter 1. This book of the law, so it's the Torah, shall not depart from your mouth. That means we need to speak Torah. But you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I encourage Christians, meditate on the word. word. Put yourself in the biblical scene. Have these words in your mouth, in your heart. Memorize them. Write them on the, the door of your house. Write them on plaques and put them up on your walls. Have these words fill you, and you will have success. Here's a word from Psalms 20. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. For Terry, for me, for all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again next week.